Carbon credits was a revolutionary way for governments to make corporations pay for their carbon footprint in the environment. The problem is that these carbon credits might in some cases be an illusion because companies found ways of making their businesses officially carbon neutral while actually not being it. There are ways to fix this, but that's not what we're going to be going into details with in this video. We would rather look a bit into the future and see, will you actually have carbon credits that are personal in the future? And if you do, Will they be found in your everyday items? I'm Jeppe and welcome to Tech I Want. So to understand how carbon credits are changing and how your shoes can actually save the world, let's start exploring how much traditional carbon credits change the world. For you to understand it, I first have to introduce you to market-based climate policies. You can imagine that the most easy way to cut carbon emissions is for governments to put massive restrictions on businesses like strict taxes, disallowing them to pollute, so on and so forth. Essentially putting roadblocks to the polluting aspects of their businesses. But this will potentially hurt their revenue and might bankrupt loads of the companies. Though that might be the easiest solution, it might not be the best. So instead, defined in the Kyoto Protocol, 192 countries made a new idea to make carbon credits. Each credit represents one ton of carbon emissions and each company would be given the permission to pollute a certain amount of credits. If they exceeded their limit, they would be fined. But if they didn't exceed their limit, they could actually sell their credits to other companies, thus making a profit. And that's where the interesting part comes in. They could essentially make it profitable for themselves to cut their own emissions. And this would be done in their own way, deciding the best ways to cut emissions themselves that wouldn't hurt the revenue. Thus, a free market carbon policy. And over time, companies would be given fewer and fewer credits. So it might seem like a utopia model, but critics actually say that there are crucial overseen pitfalls. In October of 2019, a French gas tanker docked to the port of Daping in southern China. The company, called Total, proudly marked the gas as carbon neutral because they bought credits from a now 10-year-old wind farm in northern China. And this presents the central problem with carbon credits. The wind farm was established and well working before the carbon credits were purchased from them. Meaning that without getting the money from Total, they would have actually continued their activities anyways, marking the impact of the carbon credits zero. It's not the first time that corporations back carbon neutral projects with their contributions not having additional value to the carbon project. And it might be confusing, but here's the key word, it's additionality. The Carbon Offset Guide, written by the Greenhouse Gas Institute and Stockholm Environment Institute, states that additionality is essential for the quality of carbon offset credits. If their associated greenhouse gas reductions are not additional, then purchasing offset credits to show that you're carbon neutral actually will make climate change worse. It's a super interesting topic, but I won't get more into this. If you'd like to see a video where I go deeper into the topic, let me know in the comments. But now let's move to the most interesting part of the video. We had a talk with the founder of Rebo Bottle, a bottle that picks up plastic bottles for every bottle of water that you drink. This sounds like a relatively simple idea, but actually it gives an alternative view into what carbon credits could be for the future. Now, I must state that we actually did a promotion for them with a previous review. You should check it out 100%. Uh, this is not a promotion. Uh, they don't even know that we were making this video. We were just quite inspired by what they said. Their vision is to reinvent consumer goods for countering the climate crisis. And the best part is it doesn't just stop at the bottle. Imagine if our everyday objects were designed in a way to counter the climate crisis effectively. Let's say for every kilometer that you walk in your carbon shoes, you plant a tree. Or for every vegan, organic, homegrown meal that you eat with your carbon fork, it removes one ton of methane from a cattle farm. So of course, in this scenario, the carbon reducing actions that you make with these items must be beneficial for you also. For example, Repo measures your water intake, helps you stay hydrated, and even shows you every public drinking fountain where you can refill the bottle. And the best part about this is that you don't have to do anything. So this means that the earlier that you start with these products, the more impact that you will have. But that makes it super easy for you because then imagine that you have a lineup of different items that are, let's say, offsetting your carbon footprint, of course, you have the time to limit your carbon in different ways. But there is a central criticism to this approach, and it's actually something I've been saying for a couple of years. I don't personally think that consumerism is a good solution for climate change. Like you see all these eco products that you can buy, that you can offset, you can buy this 
organic soap, that whatever, whatever. But we know that so much of the pollution that we do is from over-purchasing and consuming too much and buying things that we don't need. For example, buying a cotton tote bag to transport your vegetables. According to a 2018 study done by the Ministry of Environment and Food in Denmark, an organic tote needs to be used at least 20,000 times to offset its overall impact of production. And chances are you don't just have one tote bag, you have three or 10 or 25. So is this bottle actually any different? It's immensely hard to measure, to be honest. And I don't know. The repo team I know have followed strict production guidelines and are awaiting the gold standard accreditation for their production, but still the calculation is too complicated for me to give insights. All I'm saying is that we need to always be slightly skeptical about people asking us to buy something for the health of the environment. But let me just give you some numbers. Considering that you're supposed to drink around two liters of water daily, with Rebo, you could potentially remove 730 plastic bottles from the ocean per year. And because Rebo is designed to last, you could potentially save over 7,300 plastic bottles from the ocean in let's say 10 years and never have to buy a plastic bottle again. So Rebo is actually trying something quite new, trying to redefine what a carbon credit is. And we believe that this new version of carbon credits can be an effective way to help the environment. I love to see a world where my everyday items were helping me offset my carbon footprint, but we can't be sure until more research is done on what difference it has and if the effect of the production of it can be justified compared to the materials that they use for production. So, do you see carbon footprints evolve into your daily life? And what do you think? Share your thoughts below. That's all for me. I'm Jöbe, and this was Tech I Want.